What's going on YouTube? Back with another MX650 modification video. Um, today I'm actually gonna be turning up the speed. Last week I added a seven cell RC battery to run in line with the 36 volt system, uh, which actually increased the speed about five miles an hour with my 175 pound self on it. Uh, from factory, the Razor gets me up to about 16.8 miles an hour on flat ground. I'm looking for something close to 30 miles an hour. So I purchased a 48 volt or over volt kit from eBay along with a couple items to get a lot more out of this thing. So let's get started. So here's the 48 volt or over volt kit that I got online from Fast Scooters. Uh, it came with a new uh, set of grips, um, which definitely look a lot better than the factory ones. Not as slim, definitely thicker, but I, I do like that. Um, the right one has a voltmeter on it and um, also has a ignition switch now. So it's definitely comforting that no one can just walk away with my bike um, if I don't have the key in it. And I like that it's not just a part throttle twist, it's the actual whole handle. So it's a little bit closer to an actual motorcycle. The controller came with, is supposed to be slightly different in dimension, but should still fit in place. We'll find out. Uh, see if we gotta make any modifications to get it in there. Uh, the plugs came labeled uh, for the most part. Some of these don't come used or they're not needed. So this one's for the charge port, directly for the battery. And then the um, five pin one is actually for the controller to hook up to. Um, the other items like headlight, optional brake light switch, um, those are optional. So might, might hook that up later on, but not today. The kit also came with instructions and some zip ties. Other items I got are you know, 14 gauge wiring because I'm gonna be adding a fourth battery to convert it to a um, 48 volt. So I'm gonna add this fourth battery. Hopefully this fits fine at the um, top with the third battery. Um, we'll see if we have to make too much modification. Got more zip ties since we are gonna be running a lot of wiring. I want it to look cleaner and a set of um, 12 gauge um, female wire connectors. This is to fit to the terminals since I'm gonna be running this in line with the rest. Uh, another item I got is a 48 volt charger from the same company, Fast Scooters. So since the factory charger is not gonna charge all four batteries to full capacity, I got this one. Looks like it's supposed to be the same exact plug as the factory one, so it doesn't look too hacked up. Let's see. Well, fits right into the factory port. The battery that I got is just another 12 volt, 12 amp hour sealed lead acid battery by Mighty Max. I actually got this thing from Amazon. Um, it is actually pretty heavy, maybe like eight or nine pounds. So this is definitely gonna add a little bit of noticeable weight to the bike itself. Uh, hopefully the upside outweighs the downsides. We'll find out. I will leave links in the description where I got all these items in case you are interested in tackling this kind of project yourself. But uh, let's get started taking this thing apart, starting with the plastics. Once you get all the hardware loosened on the right side, the clamshell just pops right off. On the left side, uh, you do have to unplug the on-off switch 
and the uh, charge port from the uh, harness. This green thing is not a uh, factory razor. This is uh, actually the speed booster mod that I did uh, last week, which allows me to run uh, additional battery uh, on top of the batteries that came with the bike. Um, so ignore this. If you have a stock razor, you will not have this on your bike. But I am considering using this um, to run my fourth battery, to run it in a series so I don't have to splice into the factory harness. But I am undecided since I'm considering keeping this option in case I want to stack another battery on top of everything. As far as battery sizing, that battery that I got from Mighty Max is actually identical in dimensions as the factory battery as far as uh, width, length, and height. So pretty happy with that. I'm going to have to figure something out about fitting this on in this area, whether or not I'm going to do it sideways. I know I'm going to have to modify the box to do that. So this is the factory controller that we are going to replace. There's five wire harnesses or plugs going to it. Uh, the six pin one is going to the factory throttle. These two black and red ones with the really small wires are actually signal wires for the brake um, levers. It cuts off power to the motor whenever you apply brakes. It's a safety feature, kind of annoying. I'm thinking of disassembling it. And then this plug goes to the charge port on the left cover. And this goes to the power source, which is actually intercepted by the on off switch also on the cover which also hooks up to the rest of the batteries. One plug that I forgot to mention is the blue and yellow one coming from the controller which connects to the black and red wire um, going straight to the factory motor. So there's a total of six plugs going to it. And to remove the controller from the bracket, you just have to remove these two uh, Allen bolts on the side. And this bracket is actually built into the tie down for the bottom batteries. And like what I mentioned before, the sizing dimensions are completely different from the controllers. The factory controller is actually a little bit bigger, uh, but these two holes will no longer line up with this since these ones are actually the plugs in the way so you can just get an idea it's actually more narrow than the factory one so i'm going to be running a zip tie through these to secure them through the hole in the bracket so this is what i ended up doing to secure the controller to the bracket i ran a i looped a zip tie through the larger holes and then under the plug which secured it on the inside of this lip on the factory bracket. Same thing with the other side. I looped it through and around. Um, but then I also added the factory bolt to pinch the controller in place to make sure that the controller is fully secured in the bracket. So far, the kit's been very plug and play. The uh, motor plug plugged right in, even the two brake lever safety connectors actually plugged right in which i'm going to eliminate at some point when i do hydro brakes later on uh, and then the power source and the charge port i'm going to loop those to go to the other side we'll find out if some modification has to be done there and a lot of these the um, headlight and the tail lamp ones are uh, optional and then this five pin one is going to go to the new throttle which we're going to install now First step to remove the factory throttle is to cut these zip ties so we can remove the wiring for the original plug. Take it all off and uh, loosen this Allen screw and then it should slide right off. And then on this side, this grip actually just twists right off. So the throttle was just that one Allen bolt and then yeah you don't even have to fully remove it just loosen it so you can slide this out. 
after you twist this part off. The left handle was a pain in the ass, but you just gotta work it bit by bit and uh, it'll eventually you just wiggle off. Now let's put the new grips on. Left side, starting with the hard side. Push it in bit by bit, twist. So here's what the new grip looks like. It's definitely a lot thicker and more comfortable. And then on the uh, right side where the bolt meter is, you do have to loosen the Allen bolt for the uh, brake lever, just so you can rotate it out of the way. So you can tighten the Allen screw to lock it in place. Once you have the throttle locked in place where you want it positioned, it's time to run the harness to the controller. So we're gonna run this through this hole run the wire down here we're going to loop it in this insulation with the brake wires and then we're going to route it to the controller and connect it controller plugged in to the throttle Clean things up a little bit with the um, zip ties. And then here's the factory insulation with the three wires in it. And then um, installed some zip ties here to keep it routed away from the shock from when it's compressing. You also don't want to tighten these two zip ties too much. You want to make sure that there's still some slack for things to move around when you're turning. Key fits nice and snug. Clicks into place, I love that. So let's turn it on, off. We're pretty much all done with the electronics install and wiring, uh, except for the power source and the charge port. I am gonna have to look more into that. See, I'm gonna fit my fourth battery in here um, and how I want things positioned. So according to the instructions, the power source plug from the controller is supposed to hook up directly to the battery. Um, and completely bypass the on-off switch since it would be redundant with the circuit incomplete without the key in and turn the ignition on. Just to show you what I mean and for testing purposes, I connected the controller onto the batteries and I'm gonna key on. Now the circuit's complete and it's powered on. So it would be redundant to have a separate on-off switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut right here and I'm going to run the fourth battery in a series and that should complete my 48 volt system. Stay tuned if you are interested in keeping up with my overvolt conversion for this MX650. Uh, I mean, I'm going to do a part two video for the battery install since I am going to have to modify the top tray to install that fourth battery and then wrap up the wiring. I am going to have to get some additional tools out of storage um, this week so I can continue this, wrap it up, and take it out for a test drive. So if you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel. I will leave links in the description where you can get all this stuff if you want to get it for your bike. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.